Hi guys, people of Earth, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I am going to frog this sock. And I thought it would be kind of interesting to make a video on how I do that because, I mean, it'd be easy, except that this sock has lycra running all the way through it. So that kind of sucks, but I'm going to frog it anyway. <laughs> Let me talk about why I'm frogging this sock. Let me show you what, what happened. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? It looks great. Ugh. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Okay, so here's the socks. You probably recognize them if you've been following my channel. I This is the last video I did. Sorry, just bumped the camera. This is the last video I did. I made these socks for my niece, Clara, and it's made with opal yarn <clears throat> right here. Safari opal. And it's 100 grams and it has 425 meters. I don't know what that is in yards, but here's the label for this sock. Opal yarn, 100 grams, 425 meters. So it should be the same, right? That's what I thought. All right, so I did these socks. They came out great, and, and I had already done a test with Clara in my house, and she tried them on, and it fit. So I know that these are going to fit her. And my sister, her mother, is only a little bit bigger foot, so I thought I'll just add about four rows, and it'll be great for my sister. And if I'm going to be sending socks to Clara, I might as well send them for my sister, right? Right. So I started the sock off. I did a scallop top selvage. And as you know, if you've been watching my channel, um, that means the river goes on right away. And then the river stays on all the way through the sock. I didn't do a tension test for this yarn. I didn't do... I didn't do nothing. I just put the yarn on, didn't change a thing, and made a sock. And I just, the only difference was, let me just double check here. These are the socks I made for Clara, and I did 56 foot rows. The only difference was, I only added two rows, 58 foot rows. All right, and look at the difference. This sock will fit my size 10 foot. My sister has a size of eight, eight and a half foot. So if we line these babies up, look at that. Look how much bigger that is. And my first, that's more than two rows. <laughs> anyway, my first, uh, I knew that there was going to be a problem. When I took, I got to the toe and I took my ribber off. And it, while it was on the machine and I saw the stitches on the cylinder, they were really big big, big stitches. And I thought, oh crap, I didn't do a tension test because this is all opal and I figured it'd all be the same. And I was just so disappointed. I finished it off and I put the waist yarn on, but I was like, damn it. And sure enough, I popped it on my foot. They're a teeny bit, a little snug on my foot, but they shouldn't be fitting my size 10 foot. So a lot of people, I actually posted about this on the Facebook group and a lot of people says, just find a foot you know, don't frog it, find a foot that it'll fit. But my problem with that is these stitches are too big. I know if I were to wear it, I would be annoyed by the two big stitches. I like a nice, tight, t as tight as I can get it fabric. And the socks that I've made in the past that don't have that tight fabric, I have not enjoyed wearing them and I slowly stop wearing them. So yeah, I'm going to frog it. And make it for my sister in the proper size with the tension test. And also someone else pointed out. So this is, these are the two. <clears throat> someone else said that this one here, the Schaff Pate, always has a slightly thinner yarn and it. They've always needed to tighten the tension for that one. And I was like, grr, if only I had known that or done a tension test, I would have known that. I'm, I'm pretty pissed at Opal right now. <laughs> so I'm going to frog this sock. And I thought... Hey, what a better time to uh, show y'all how I do that because with Lycra, it's not easy. This is a mess. Boy, is it. I'm just going to start snipping away here. Um, it's a me it's, uh, it's not easy to snip it, to, to frog it when there's Lycra. And, but uh, sometimes you're just like, I, I'm, I, I don't think I would call myself a perfectionist, but, you know, I want it the way I want it. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I'm frogging this baby. So let me get this, this waist yarn all separated out here. And let me talk to you about 
having how your yarn feeds into the machine. I use a Royal Cone Winder. They used to make these guys, I don't know when, a couple decades ago. You could get them everywhere. A Royal Cone Winder. It's got this lovely little thingy. This pops right on here. It kind of holds it snug. It feeds through this. It winds a nice cone. When I first started on this sock machine journey, um, I, what did I do? I think, I mean, I have a ball winder. I got it from Knit Picks. But the problem with ball winders, and it works for my, my hand knitting and crocheting. It works great. I like a center pull for that. But the problem with the ball winder is the yarn, oh my gosh, this is a big mess. The yarn kind of goes underneath. It makes a ball, but instead of the yarn, see how this yarn kind of slopes down and it slopes up? The yarn kind of goes up and under. And that is no good when you're trying to knit from a machine. So um, on the Facebook group, the somebody said, hey, they sell, they're selling these Royal Cone Winders. You can sometimes find those on eBay too. I never could. I looked. I looked hard. But I never could find one. So um, they said, hey, there's a company in Germany that is producing them now and so and they're producing cones and everything so i uh went to the website it's all in german but you know you can you've got chrome google chrome you can just hit the translate button and figure it out and i sent them an email and lo and behold and i bought 30 cones 30 of these cones to begin with and i quickly ran out of cones <laughs> I quickly ran out of cones. This cone winder has been doing a great job for me, though. Um, I think the next order of cones, I ordered 50, and then, um, no, it wasn't that much. I think the first order was only 20 cones. Bye! That was my husband. Uh, and then the next one, I ordered 30 cones, and then the last one, I thought, I don't want to ever have to order cones again, so I ordered like 100, and this is what I got. Ooh, look at all those pretty cones. Yay hoo. So now I'm set for cones. <laughs> when I first had the first set of cones, I uh, I kept having to take yarn off the cones so I could because I would run out of cones. <clears throat> and now I can leave my yarn on cones if I want to. Okay, so let's get to the frogging. I make sure this is pushed far down. And I have to put this back here. And then I wind it through my little, I don't know what that's called, a guide. Let me move my camera a little bit so you can see how I do this. I think that should work. Let's see. Okay, so here's my sock. The waist yarn is off. Um, and there is... Oof. Let me see if I can fix this a little bit more. <laughs> Let's move it up a little. Okay. Let's see, is it all on camera? Yes. Okay, so there's the lycra. And you have to separate the lycra out. You cannot just frog this yarn with lycra in the yarn. That does not work. Um, I, I don't know if I can explain why it doesn't work. It just does not. <laughs> You're just going to have to trust me. The, the lycra should be fed through the machine as the masak is being knit. And um, you can't just like put it next to the yarn already on the cone. It's just no, 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 no. Can't do it. So if you make a sock with lycra and decide and something goes horribly wrong, and things go horribly wrong for me all the time. <laughs> a little less when I first started, but oh, Lordy, what is going on with this knot? But things still go horribly wrong, and I, I have quite a lot of practice on frogging socks with the lycra. I need more light. All right. What is going on with this knot? It's one of those knots where you're hoping maybe you can just pull hard and it'll come free, but no, that was not the case. Okay, now we're good. 
So, so when I got done with the sock and I saw those great big stitches on there, it looks kind of fine now, but you can really tell on the machine. Um, I did not cut the yarn because I, I had an idea that this wasn't going to work. So I didn't cut the yarn. Um, I kept it all intact because why cut yarn? If I, I hate having yarn on two cones if you don't need to. So to frog this sock, I'm going to hold it between my knees and I'm going to just frog it by hand holding the Lycra. I'm going to hold the Lycra with one hand and the yarn in the other hand. And I just go like this. Whoop. 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 Until I have a nice pile of yarn. Sometimes I'll just break that off and throw it away if it gets too troublesome. It's very troublesome. It sticks to everything. Get my trash can closer. <clears throat> and I'm just going to keep going. I'm grabbing the yarn and the lycra as I go. Pull. Sometimes it snags. And see how, I don't know if you can see that, but it gets really twisted up in the in the yarn. So um, if it curls in on itself, you got to straighten the yarn out. So I've got a decent size pile of yarn over here that I can show you. See all that yarn? I don't want that pile to get too big. Otherwise I'll get knots as I try to wind it on my cone winder. So I get a little pile, I, I pull, I frog a bit, and then I wind a bit. See, it's a little, it happens. It's a, it's a tedious process. It's one of the reasons why some people don't, don't use Lycra, cause boy, all right, now I've got it back. I'm going to pull the Lycra and I'm going to just frog some more. And that is how I frog a sock with Lycra. It's like having an arm workout. You can't see anything because I have the camera wrong. Sorry. It is like an arm workout. On socks that I don't have Lycra through the whole thing, it's a little easier because you can frog away at the part of the sock that has no lycra. You can just frog it directly onto the cone. Oh, doggy left me. Didn't like the noise, I guess. My, my two dogs are laying on my spare room bed here. So this is it. This is all. This is how you do it. Um, I will put a link to my cone winder in the comments. I gotta say, um, if you're nervous about ordering from overseas or online, um, I'm in my mid-40s. So I came from, I experienced both worlds. <laughs> the youth of today have no problem stand by. They have no problem ordering stuff online. And when I, when they first started, you know, when Amazon became a thing, I had, I, I'm a little old and I thought, well, I can just go to the store and get it and I'll have it right now. But as I got older, <laughs> it became super fun <laughs> to just order stuff online and you kind of forget you order it. And then it's like getting a present in the mail. But, um, you know, I, I would just get over it. The, the company in Germany is a great company. Um, they respond. I email them to order. I email and I say, I would like this cone winder and I would like these cones, this many of this type of cone. They come in two kinds of cones, actually. There's like one that's supposed to be super hard and unbreakable and it's more expensive. And then these ones. They're not as super hard, I guess, and they are breakable. And some of them do. Like, I found that this little piece of plastic sometimes breaks off. But it doesn't actually inhibit anything to do with the coning process. It, I Even the ones that have broken for me. And it's been like three out of 100 cones. So I'm, it's not a big problem for me. Um, so I buy the cheaper ones and they're fine. 
And I am a fan of this German company. They have a whole website dedicated to machine knitting. So it's kind of nice. It does come with like a thing of wax. It's called like, it's like paraffin wax. And I just throw it away. <laughs> I guess people with uh, big flatbed machines need this, like need to wax their yarn, I guess. I don't know. Um, it'll come with that. Don't worry about it. You don't need to use any sort of wax. All right, I think I'm done. I think this is just a short video showing you how um, as you can see, I'm just about done with the heel and this video is only 15 minutes long now and I chatted a bit in the beginning. So it, it is a pain in the butt and it goes slower than it would if you didn't have Lycra, but you know, if you're like me and you want it the way you want it, it's not that big a deal. So, so that's it. I might do a video about this sock next after I do a proper tension test. All right, that's all. Thank you, people. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, etc. And have a lovely day. Bye.